Good morning. It's Friday, September 3rd, so it must be time for another legislative update from your North Carolina Medical Society. First, I want to say thank you to each of you who attended and were registered for that uh, grassroots advocacy event that we had on Wednesday with Dr. Greg Murphy and Dr. Kristen Baker. Um, It was a wonderful conversation and great dialogue about why you should be involved in this process and some steps you can take to be more engaged and be more effective on getting your priorities for you, your profession and your patients out to legislators. Uh, Now we will be sending out a follow-up survey. So if you were registered or attended this event, please take time to fill that survey out as we hope to plan uh, more of these events with legislators across the state. We want to make sure that we're uh, providing you some meaningful information to you in these events moving forward. Uh, Next, I want to say thank you to those of you who registered for that WRAL uh, vaccine on-call event. I know we mentioned that in morning rounds to you on Thursday. Um, Had a quick turnaround time, so thank you if you participated in that. I know that's meaningful information to provide to our community to encourage vaccination rates. Uh, Next, I want to talk about House Bill 608. This is the Dignity for Women Who Are Incarcerated bill that I've mentioned several times, uh, several weeks. This bill's gone through a long and lengthy process, but it, it did pass the House on a concurrence vote this week. So it's been sent to the governor as of Thursday. Uh, so we'll continue to update you on that to see uh, when uh, or if uh, the governor signs the bill, but hopefully when. Um, again, kudos to the North Carolina OBGYN Society and Dr. Carrie Ann Crockett and many other stakeholders who've worked tirelessly on this issue. Uh, next, I want to talk about the budget. So we're still in that budget negotiation process between the House and the Senate. Now, we have uh, heard that there's been an agreement reached on a number. So $27.5 billion is the amount that both the House and the Senate budget conferees have agreed to spend. However, in other years, we've seen uh, agreement reached on specific areas within the budget. So spending caps within those areas like education or health care and, and all of the areas within the budget. Um, so we haven't seen that this year, which is partially probably uh, credit to why we're in this kind of stalemate process of not moving forward as quickly as we normally do in other budget years. Uh, however, Uh, We have heard this week that House and Senate leadership announced that we're likely to see a final budget agreement by the end of September. So we're continuing to follow this process very closely and advocate for the budget items we believe are important, but more to come on the budget as we enter a long process. Now, it's likely to be a lighter week next week because the House and Senate are not taking up votes until Wednesday. Um, So likely to be a shorter update for you next week. I hope you have a wonderful long weekend and we look forward to talking to you soon.